Mmm. Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm a good friend, Bradley, and today is a very pleasant Sunday smoke. And on this pleasant Sunday smoke, I am smoking a little bit of Kramer's Father Dempsey in my Dunhill 1964 Root Briar. Beautiful, beautifully breathtaking pipe. I love this pipe. And I'm liking this blend quite a bit. I just recorded the first impressions video for Kramer's Father Dempsey. This is another one of those blends that I have had requested many, many, many times. And I guess I followed your orders so closely that I accidentally ordered two tins of it as opposed to just one. But after having the first smoke, I'm liking it. And I think I will enjoy having two tins of this on hand. Um, as I said in the first impressions video, which you'll be able to watch this Wednesday, it's not a knock your socks off, slap you in the face kind of blend, but it seems like it's gonna be something that I grow to enjoy quite a bit. It's just a nice kind of medium, middle of the road English blend, a little bit of pleasant uh, Turkish Oriental in there as well. So it gives you a little bit of sour, a little bit of spice. You got the smoky Latakia. It's good, I'm enjoying it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I've heard about Kramer's before. I've never had a Kramer's blend. And unfortunately, their brick and mortar store closed down. They were in Beverly Hills and they had been around, I think since late 40s, early 50s, something like that. And it had been in the family. And then they closed down in like 2017 or 2018. And now Smoking Pipes has their blends and has their recipes. I'm not sure who blends them for Smoking Pipes. Maybe some of you could let me know in the comments if you have any insider information there. I was trying to do a little preliminary research, just trying to see. I know Smoking Pipes has some blends that they sort of distribute. I don't know who exactly blends the blends for Smoking Pipes. It is Ladisi, I see here, is the actual tobacco distributor that puts this out or that distributes it in the country. Um, I don't know if this is available anywhere else other than smoking pipes in the U.S. I have heard tell that there are bulk versions available in a few other retailers or at a few other retailers. I don't know where to get it in Europe, so hopefully I'll figure all that stuff out before we do the review. But yeah, Kramer's Father Dempsey, Father Dempsey I'm enjoying it. It's pretty good. We're not going to read the entire back of the tin here, but it mentions it supposedly after this blend was blended for the titular Father Dempsey, it was enjoyed by the likes of Cecil B. DeMille, Henry, who was that? Wilcoxon, Samuel Goldwyn, Gene Barry, Mike Kaplan. I guess these are like, I think Mike Kaplan was a producer maybe in Hollywood. Mel Tolkien, name sounds familiar, but I'm not sure who that is. And then Fred McMurray, I know him, he was, in some movies in the 40s and 50s and then was in My Three Sons, right? And was in Disney movies too. He smoked a pipe. So it has a little bit of, uh, of history behind it. I don't know, obviously this isn't the same blend that was blended by the Kramer's Pipe Tobacco Shop, uh, Kramer's Pipes and Tobacco Shop. Um, oh, and it does say since 1949, so yes, late 40s. But uh, I don't know. I'm assuming that it's fairly close if it's following the recipe. Maybe some of you who have had the original Kramer's blend from the shop could let me know whether this Smoking Pipes version is the same or as good or better than the original. In other news, we started a new series uh, last week called Revisited. So this is gonna be something that we do every once in a great while. Um, and it's basically me taking a blend that I reviewed in the past and after several years have passed, I'm not gonna do this when I've reviewed a blend just a month back, but if some time has passed, I haven't really had the blend since, I, re I revisit it, hence the title, and I see if I still feel the same way about the blend. And I've already got a lot of good feedback on that video in the comments section, and I'd love more from you guys just to know maybe the direction you wanna put this, or you want the series to go in, if it's anything that's even interesting to you. It seems like it got a good response. Um, I did it on Gaslight by GLPs, a blend that I really enjoyed when I initially reviewed it and then revisited it and enjoy it a lot still. Some of you had suggestions about, you know, where, what the, the tenor of the revisiting video should be. Should I go into the vital stats like we do in the actual reviews? 
Um, should I review blends or should I revisit blends that I didn't like at all originally? I had a good suggestion from someone who was mentioning blends that have been, maybe they were produced by a different maker when I reviewed it and now they've been picked up by someone else. And so they've kind of been re-blended. Um, there are some Peterson tobaccos for sure that were originally blended. Um, I think, God, yeah, even when I did Irish Flake, um, that is now out again, I think, but it's a different blender, so that might be worth revisiting. So I'm taking all this feedback in. I want you guys to know how much I appreciate that. When you leave comments, I may not, and I often don't, respond individually to the comments, but I do take all that feedback in and it does make a difference. I like knowing what you guys are into, what you guys appreciate seeing on the channel. So it's always very appreciated when I get feedback like that. So expect some more revisited um, episodes every once in a while. They're not gonna be in every week or, or every two weeks or maybe even every month kind of thing, but I'm gonna start peppering those in amongst first impressions and reviews of blends and reviews of other products. So stay tuned for that and please enjoy it. Next, if you've been following along with Stuff and Things Plays, you will know that today, the very last Red Dead Redemption 2 video posted. The series is over. We have finally completed the game after, what was it, 94 episodes, I think? It's a long game. I think the only series I had that was longer than that was, I can't remember. I think my Breath of the Wild playthrough was like well over 100 episodes, but it was a long game. It's a great game. <clears throat> the ending, I think, is very... I'd say very satisfying, very, very cool narrative, really well-realized characters, so definitely check that out. And now that that series is done, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to continue with Sekiro, but also, as per the request of some viewers, I'm going to continue with Cuphead because I've been playing that on the Switch. So today I was trying to record some episodes and I was reminded these are two very difficult games. Cuphead is very difficult. Sekiro is a difficult game. And when I'm recording episodes, I need to have an episode. I need to have something happen in the episode. And even though it might be amusing to just see me beating my head against a wall over and over again, trying to beat a particular boss or go through a certain area or something in whichever game I'm playing, something has to happen. I have to eventually beat that boss for the episode to be complete. And so I was trying to record Cuphead today um, and I did, I think I did two bosses and like a run and gun episode. You'll know if you've seen any of the Cuphead uh, episodes um, or a run and gun stage. And it took about two and a half hours to record two episodes of about 25 minutes each. Ah, so the, the return on investment there is not great, especially because I only get a couple hundred views on my gameplay videos anyway. But so I, I very much encourage you to check out my gameplay channel. It's sort of a labor of love for me. I don't make any money on it. Um, but the amount of work I put into it is, it, it's, it's substantial. There's a lot of time and a lot of effort that goes into making those videos. So I did some Cuphead videos, those will be out this week, and then I did some Sekiro videos, and there was a very difficult boss, at least for me, that I was struggling with quite mightily. Um, I finally succeeded, and again, that was a couple hours at least of recording for maybe a 40 minute episode that we'll post this week. And then I still have to record one more Sekido episode. But for those of you asking, Sekido will continue, Cuphead will continue. Those will be starting to post every other, every other episode will be Cuphead, Sekido, Cuphead, Sekido, until Cuphead's done, which shouldn't be very, shouldn't be too long. And then it'll be all Sekido. And then maybe peppering in a couple other things here and there making very expansive hand gestures today. I'm not exactly sure why. We'll have to deal with it. And now just for little anecdotes about my daily life, which some of you seem to appreciate. Um, my girlfriend has a car that has been making a noise and it's been driving her crazy because she doesn't know what it is. And when she first described it to me, I the way she described it, it made me think it was a belt, like maybe a power steering belt or maybe a fan belt or something like that. But it's one of those things that is so intermittent and so difficult to reproduce. 
and so difficult to actually, basically you have to have someone in the car and then someone outside the car trying to diagnose the noise and the noise will not always occur when you are there listening for the noise. It, it's, it's one of those really irritating things and it drives me crazy. Nine tenths of fixing a car is diagnosing the issue. And once you have the issue diagnosed, it's usually fairly simple to repair it depending on what it is and what year your car is. My car is, the engine compartment is so hermetically sealed because uh, it's a more recent vehicle that it's a little more difficult to work on probably, but she has an older Honda Accord and like I'm pretty sure I could fix most things that could be wrong with it. If it's a timing belt, whatever it is, I could probably fix that. But just finding out what it is, is driving us both insane. Like for a while I was thinking maybe it was something um, suspension related, but then I ruled that out because it was still making the, the noise occasionally under idle. Sometimes it's only under load when you're accelerating. Sometimes it isn't like, it's just so intermittent. I'm leaning towards maybe it's just a component that has, it, it sounds like it could be just like a, a screeching caused by, by a component vibrating against something and it's intermittent and it's only when the engine's under load for the most part. And then I was thinking, well, maybe it's a belt, maybe, but it doesn't really sound like a belt. So it's just, it's driving me absolutely insane. And I know that if there are those of you out there who are mechanics, you will probably have all sorts of useful advice, but it's so hard to properly describe this very intermittent and very ethereal sound that it's almost impossible to search for, you know, on car forums and things like that. So basically I'm just gonna spend the next couple of days trying to drive around with my head out the window or having her like on the gas or me like screwing with the throttle in the engine compartment, trying to diagnose this thing. Eventually, we're probably just gonna have to break down and bring it in somewhere and say, hey, what's wrong with this? But then even with the mechanic, you'll bring the car in and be like, it's making this noise. They'll drive it around and say, oh, there's no noise. We couldn't hear a noise. So it's just, it's maddening. I wish I just knew what it was and I would fix it. All right, enough blathering on though. It is time for your questions, which you can submit to me for the part of the show we like to call hashtag ask stuff and things. If you go to Twitter and tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag ask stuff and things, I will try to answer your question on the next Sunday Smoke. Also, if you are a Patreon supporter, you can submit questions on Patreon and I will answer them, which a lot of people have done this week and this is gonna be Patreon heavy. I wanted to try to get to a lot of these Patreon questions. So let's begin with number one, our very good friend, Peter Straub. He is part of the maniac tier on Patreon one of the most generous viewers and a great guy. He says, Hey Bradley, I wanted to ask a question for Sunday Smoke. When I started on the pipe hobby about two years ago, I found I enjoyed English blends such as Dunhill's 965 and London Mixture, McClellan's Frog Morton and Drakur's Devil's Own and Blair Gowrie. When I tried Virginia blends and vapors, I didn't like them. I think my tastes have changed and expanded a bit and wanted to ask, ask you what vapors you would recommend to a person very fond of English blends. That's an interesting question and it's one that I don't know if I've had put to me exactly in this way through the context of someone who likes English blends, what vapors would you recommend? A lot of the times I recommend vapors for people who don't think they're going to like English blends um, or Latakia blends, but they wanna try non-flavored blends. Um, I think in my opinion, vapors are, I don't wanna sound snobby here because I don't, feel, I don't feel as though I'm superior because I like Virginia blends, but they are a lot more nuanced than a lot of English blends in my opinion, or a lot of Kia blends. And I feel like if you are a pipe smoker and you've only been smoking Englishes, you should get into vapors or Virginia blends, straight Virginia blends, because <clears throat> I think it gives you a better idea of, of tobacco flavor. You can you can tease out the flavors in a Virginia blend and it can be really nuanced and there can be a lot going on even if it's just a straight Virginia. So I think it might actually help expand your palate a little bit. Some Virginias that I love, um, I love Gawith Full Virginia Flake. It's hard to find these days um, and it's just a straight Virginia, it's not a vapor, but it has so much going on for just a straight Virginia blend. I think it's really tasty and it's a, it's a pretty full body, full flavor blend. Of course, Elizabethan would have been a choice of mine. Um, 
but vapors that I like, I like GLP Stratford quite a bit. You could try something like Escudo. Escudo has um, a little more going on than just a Virginia Perique blend typically has. Um, it has some sweetness in there. There's quite a bit of flavor. Um, I'm trying to think of other ones off the top of my head. I enjoy, um, I've had Gawith, um, what was their vapor? I can't remember the name now. There's a Gawith vapor. The name is escaping me. Um, it was a green tin. I think I reviewed it on the channel. Someone will remind me in the comments, but I would start with something like, try a Scudo. Try a Scudo, Peter, and then the next time we talk, you can let me know what you think of it. It's something that's readily available and it's pretty damn tasty in my opinion. Thanks for the question. Next, we have Corbin Bordner via Patreon. He says, what type of fuel do you use in an IM Corona? Uh, he actually has three questions, so let's deal with them one at a time. Um, I use five times refined butane. So just go to a convenience store or whatever that sells butane and just make sure it's five times refined and you should be fine. He also asks, are we getting a Red Dead 1 playthrough, please? <sighs> Several people have asked that since I am finishing Red Dead 2 and Red Dead 1 is actually, uh, Red Dead 2 is a prequel to Red Dead 1. So it would actually sort of continue the story of Red Dead 2 if I were to play Red Dead 1. I don't know, maybe sometime in the future, but I've played that game. I played the hell out of that game when it first came out and it's been years now. So maybe it wouldn't be super fresh in my mind, but typically when I play a game on the channel, I like it to be a blind playthrough so I can sort of experience the story with you guys as I play it, but I'll keep that in mind. And then he says, uh, I just don't get why a Zippo imparts flavors and a pipe lighter doesn't. Well, that's a debate that we've had on the channel before, and it's something that I don't really put as much stock in as other people do. I will use a Zippo to light a pipe. I don't think it's that big a deal. Um, people say that sometimes you can get the taste of the Zippo fluid on your tobacco. I think if you have not overfilled the Zippo and you let it burn a little bit before you put it right in the pipe and don't like drip fluid into your pipe, it's fine. I think a Bic is fine. I think a butane pipe lighter is fine. I think matches are fine. Use whatever works for you. All right, next we have Dr. Dre. Pronounced the same as Dr. Dre, he says. So this is Dr. Dre, D-R-E-Y. And he says, pronounced the same as Dr. Dre, D-R-E. Like this and like this and like that. Uh -huh. uh, he asked for an old timey mobster voice. He says, <clears throat> Got a question for you, Bradley. You've been going on and on about how no other blends can match Elizabethan. Have you ever had the itch to make your own blend, whether an Elizabethan type vapor or another blend entirely? I kind of just did a weird like 30s transcontinental accent there. You certainly seem to know what you like. Anyhow, keep up the good work, son. Um, we've talked about me blending my own blends before and I have Screwed around with that a little bit. I had some Perique, I had some Red Virginias, and I mixed various, you know, proportions of those together. It's fine, but blending, blending requires more than just getting tobacco and putting them in a mixing bowl and, and mixing it up. Um, and I don't really have the facilities, nor the time, nor the inclination to bother doing that. Um, it might be something that could be fun to delve into if I had more room and more time, but for now, I'll leave it to the experts. Next, we have Amy McMasters, another supporter on Patreon. She says, feeling feisty, read with an Irish accent. Oh God, anytime anyone asks me to do Irish or Scottish, it's always a travesty, but here we go, let's try. <clears throat> I remember a few years ago, you got a Peterson Deluxe pipe that came without the stinger. I recently acquired one that also came without the stinger. I recall you reached out to Peterson and they sent you one. Were they easy to deal with? Also, does the pipe smoke any differently without the stinger? So far, I've really liked the pipe and for me, it seems to smoke fine without it. But I'm wondering if I'm missing anything. Without the stinger, it smokes a lot like my Peterson spigot. Um, I cannot remember now if I ended up taking the stinger out of that pipe. I don't think the stinger makes that much of a difference in those system pipes. Um, it's basically just your own personal preference. I wanted one just so it would be complete. 
But it's the same with like, like this Dunhill came with an inner tube. I don't use the inner tube in the Dunhill when I smoke it and I haven't really noticed that much of a difference. Um, and I don't notice that much of a difference with the Stinger in the Petersons as well. Next, we have from Twitter, Giorgio Corrado at Balsifer. He says, Hey Bradley, just watched your new revisiting series of tobacco blends. Nice work. I was wondering if you will also revisit some of the old blends that have been reblended, since some of these blends, like Peterson Tobacco, had been sold to other manufacturers, and I'm interested to know if the new blends are still a hit or a miss from your last reviews. So this is something that I actually mentioned when I was talking about the revisited series, and I think it was based on this comment. Um, yes, I think that's a good idea, and that is probably something that we will do in the future. Thank you, Giorgio. This is from Tyler at Tyler Brew Brew. He says, I noticed before in your previous videos that once you smoke a pipe, you enter a sort of stupor. It's the same with me, and it's very calming. That said, would you say pipe smoking can be a form of meditation? Hashtag ask stuff and things. Um, yes, that's something that I have commented about, commented about before and that many people have commented about before, that smoking a pipe can be a very calming, meditative sort of thing where because you are focusing on a task, it's not like smoking a cigarette where it's just hanging out of your mouth and you don't really think about it at all. With a pipe, you are tamping it, you're lighting it, you're inserting a pipe cleaner sometimes if it gets a little moist. It's something that you kind of have to concentrate on but the fact that your mind can focus on this one thing really helps you sort of, um, I guess, get into a zone of relaxation and calm. And the fact that it's a pleasant thing to do as well. I find pipe smoking so much more calming and so much more meditative than almost any kind of, I don't know, relaxation method that I could employ. Obviously when I'm in a Sunday smoke and I'm trying to talk to you, it's not quite the same effect, but when I have my morning pipe with, you know, my morning coffee and I can just take the time to just relax, that's why I enjoy pipe smoking so much. It really sets me up for the day. And then when I can end the day that way as well, it really just helps to focus my thoughts, calm me down. It's great. All right, gang. Thank you so much for the questions. Remember, your questions help the show go. So if you are on Twitter, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag Ask Stuff and Things. If you are on Patreon, you can leave a comment or send me a direct message and I will put your question in the show if you want me to. But now it's time for the very best part of the show. It's the time when we thank our Patreon supporters, those who support the channel at $25 and up, get a shout out on the Sunday Smoke. And we will start with our Patreon $25 supporters like... Glenn with two N's. Thank you very much, Glenn with two N's for being a $25 supporter on Patreon. Next, we have Kevin Moore. Thank you so much, Kevin Moore, for being a supporter on Patreon. We also have Derek, just Derek. Derek is a supporter on Patreon as well, and we cannot thank Derek enough for that. We also have Cody Striegler. Cody has been, I think from the very beginning, a supporter on Patreon and we very much appreciate it. Nathaniel Hills is next. Nathaniel, thank you so much for being a Patreon supporter. Kirk Crompton, police investigative detective Kirk Crompton. I can't remember if he was a lawyer or a detective or, or a private eye, or, he's one of those. He has that kind of name, uh, hard-boiled detective, Kirk Crompton. We also have C.W. Piperman. Thank you, C.W. Piperman, for being a $25 supporter on Patreon. And Garrett, our very latest Patreon $25 supporter. Thank you so, so much. And now we have the maniac tier, the crazy people who support the channel at $100 a month. These are the people who make the show go. This is Peter Straub, our very first maniac and one of the best. Peter, thank you so much for being a supporter and uh, I'm looking forward to talking to you again, I think next month, yeah, or this month, I can't remember. We had that, we, we had a, a, a little discussion in one of our uh, message threads. We'll get that worked out soon. And thank you for your question today as well. That was quite useful in starting a conversation. And then Bob McGee. Thank you very much, Bob, for being a maniac, a crazy person on Patreon. We couldn't do it without you. All right, gang. 
I see that we are approaching 30 minutes, so it's time for me to shut up. Please remember to watch the first impressions video of Kramer's Father Dempsey coming up this Wednesday. We will have Sekiro and Cuphead videos posting throughout the week, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. So please stay tuned for those as well. And if you haven't watched the ending of the Red Dead Redemption 2 series that posted today at noon or 2, 2, you should check that out as well. But until next time, until we meet again, I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a Pleasant Sunday Smoke. I'll see you later.